Josh Stacy here, smoking a Rocky Patel in my daredevil hat. I just went to see X-Men, all right? And when I say this movie is the most perfect movie ever made, I mean perfect movie ever made, as far as comic movies go. Um, this was absolutely perfect, okay? Now, I've seen Superman vs. Batman, seen Captain America. Um, this has definitely taken the cake for best movie this year, you know, as far as superhero films go. Now, first things first, I gotta say that the best part of this movie was the fact that even though it's a superhero movie, I did not feel like I was watching a superhero movie. You know, and it's very hard not to make that cheesy, having superpowers and whatnot. But they achieved it. And they achieved that by making everyone so human that you could feel their emotions. Like, I wanted to cry like three times during this movie. I'm going out. Um, I wanted to cry like three times during this movie, okay? Like, Magneto and Xavier and um, the Phoenix, Jean Grey, like, they, their acting was amazing, okay? They made them so human. So it was this, like, really good deep connection with the character, and, you know, that's important to me when, you know, enjoying a film. Uh, you want to almost feel like you know this character. And they were able to make it so personal. They focused on each individual character without having them overshadow each other and without spending so much time on them that you became bored with them. They skipped around, but it transitioned perfectly. And then they all, you know, met up for the big scene. And that was amazing. However, they genius this situation around, they completely redeemed themselves from X-Men Last Stand, because that movie was terrible. They killed everyone, you know, I can go on about that one forever. But by resetting the timeline, it transitioned over to this perfectly, and they still actually acknowledge the previous X-Men's, um... It's not like right up up front in your face, but they still acknowledge them. So it's like, okay, they did happen. They do exist. And this is how we, you know, swing it in the other direction. Um, they didn't Spider-Man the situation, basically. And what I mean by that is we have three Spider-Mans now. And they just keep, they chose a different character, show the same storyline, you know, Mary Jane, get bit by a spider, you get web, blah, 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 you know. I know how it goes. And now they're making a third one, and it's going to be the same thing, I feel like. They didn't do that with X-Men, all right? Um, they figured out how to give you a new movie without, you know, ruining it. And without just, you know, throwing a bunch of brand new faces in the film and... You know, say that this is a new movie when you're actually watching the same movie all over again. Um, there wasn't much downtime either, and they didn't sit there spending a bunch of time on shit that we already know. Like Batman vs. Superman, I really didn't need to see Batman become Batman again. Alright? Like, you could have skipped his parents dying, him falling into a cave hole and levitating with bats around him and all that cheesy stuff. Um, they didn't need it, you know? They didn't do that with this one. Um, the trailer, extremely misleading, by the way, all right? I was under the impression that, like, Mystique somehow, like, would, you know, end up leading the X-Men and, you know, leading them into battle and stuff and, like, you know, the whole thing with the Four Horsemen and Apocalypse, like, you know, they show the Four Horsemen a lot in the trailer. And I was kind of bummed when they had Olivia Munn, you know, as a character in this movie. I loved Attack of the Show, and I love, you know, a lot of the movies that she's been in, but I just couldn't see her playing this character, really. But 
she's in the movie, but she only has, you know, a few fight sequences and, you know, the same with a lot of the characters. Um, that might be where, you know, some people might feel disappointed or anything like that, but um, it's not about that. Like I said, even though it's a superhero film, it's not a superhero film. They were so human in this movie, and I absolutely loved that. The emotions, the... Like I said, you know, it was really emotional. It was angry. And Apocalypse, ugh, my favorite bad guy, okay? Originally, my favorite bad guy of all time was the guy in Avatar, all right? At the very end, he was tearing shit up. Apocalypse, man, oh, man. Like, his monologues were epic as shit, okay? Like, I felt like I was going to war. Like, he was about to destroy planet Earth for real. You know, like, and like I said, maybe I sound like a fanboy right now. Um, I love all of the comic films. I love all of them. Um, this is definitely my favorite one now. Um, 10 out of 10, okay? And the secret reveal trailer at the end, I'm still fuzzy on that one. Um, I can only speculate, all right? But I think... That has something to do with Omega Red, all right? Now, if you don't know who Omega Red is, then that comment is not for you. But if you do, leave a comment below and tell me what you think. Fill me in if you know something that I don't, all right? But as always, happy smoking, my friends. It's a beautiful Friday, all right? I'm just going to kick back and relax the rest of the day, but definitely go see x-men if you are into any of the comic movies go see x-men it is better than captain america it is better than batman and superman all right i'm out of here